Good morning and happy Friday. Today, the most special Friday of the year, Good Friday, where we celebrate the passion of Christ who has given his life for us. I'm going to start by reading John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So what exactly does that mean for us? What does it mean uh, to celebrate Good Friday in a way that it's um, memory and re-experiencing what Jesus has done for us, right? I woke up today and I don't think it's a coincidence <laughs> At, I think it was like 3.30 in the morning or 4, 4 a.m. or something. It was a little bit a little bit before 4 a.m. And there is a priest in Brazil that he does all these rosaries in the middle of the night. I mean, he does them over and over again. He does for the church. He does for the 40 days. He does for, you know, the 40 days Lent. He does for uh, St. Michael the Archangel. He does these um rosaries like every night for 30 days 40 days you know and he does it in the middle of the night sometimes i'm a little hesitant to do it even when i wake up in the middle of the night because i'm like oh it's dark and it's the middle of the night i don't know if i want to be like necessarily you know reflecting on all of this but today i woke up early and i turned on his uh channel on youtube and i will leave the link here it's in Portuguese, but, you know, just uh, for now, it's in Portuguese. And for anybody who understands Portuguese or Spanish, it's like the bomb to participate in this rosary. It's so powerful. I I feel the presence of God in my house, in my life, when I am partaking in that rosary with him. So I was like, okay, then as soon as I put him on, I mean, the ro the, the video was already going for hours. He was going to start the first mystery and I was able to do the whole rosary at least once <laughs> with him. And I thought that was amazing. Definitely not a coincidence, right? Definitely not a coincidence. So as I woke up later, I went back to sleep and then I woke up and I started reflecting on the passion of Christ and really the meaning of everything that that he did for us. Um it's very painful for me to see anybody suffering, uh, to think about an animal suffering or a baby suffering or anybody who is just innocent, right? And that's why I have a hard time with, like, for example, I've never watched the Passion of the Christ movie. I have a really hard time watching someone suffer. Like, I feel the pain. And I mean, I don't want to say I feel the pain just like them, but it really, really is hard for me. I'm just going to say it like that. It's really hard for me. So um, I woke up today and I started to reflect, like, but why? If God is God, right, God is God, why would he have to sacrifice his son? And, you know, just in my own understanding, right, in my own understanding, which I shall not lean into, right, trust God with all your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. In my own understanding, I was like, okay, so God created the world. God created men and women, men and woman, <laughs> men and woman. And then the devil, Satan, who wanted to be better than God, who was an angel, a beautiful angel, who was created and was the musician, like the leader of music in heaven. He started being envious and jealous and started to think I can be I can be better than God. And then he was fallen. As a fallen angel, he tried to take the creation of God, the man and woman, and to tempt them and to say, hey, if you do this, you will be on my side. You know better. You know you have all the wisdom. And by that temptation, the woman, Eve, she said, okay, fine. I want to know. I want to know what's going on. And she gave in to the temptation Therefore, giving the whole humanity and all generations after generations kind of like a curse after her so that we were all born sinners from that point on. Now, God was like, okay, so you have uh, infiltrated the sin, the, the, the wisdom that 
you know, of greed and envy and jealousy and judgment. You have put all of that into the creation that I had, I had made perfectly with no sin. You have put that into all generations. I'm going to get them back. Like you will have no power over them. So although he had the initial temptation where he had power over humanity, God said, no, I'm going to send my son and he's going to sacrifice himself as a man. He will be born just like any other man, feeling pain, feeling hunger, feeling thirst, except for sin. I will send him and he will sacrifice himself. And from that point on, his sacrifice, his blood and his body, his sacrifice as an innocent, as an innocent lamb, his sacrifice will pay for any sins, anything that any of my children have committed, as long as they repent and believe in him, they will be saved. So even though Satan is a liar, he agreed with God to do that deal. deal. And he thought maybe, you know, when the son of God is born as a man, I will be able to tempt him and I will be able to make him sin as well. And then I'll have power over every soul. But when Jesus was born and when Jesus was in his mission, right before the crucifixion, which is what we um, reflect on today, right? I don't want to say celebrate, uh, but we reflect on the crucifixion today. Uh, right before then, when Jesus was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, without food, fasting, just praying, getting ready for his mission of this world, praying and agonizing to God, saying, God, my father, why have you abandoned me? If it is, if it is uh, possible, please remove from me this cup. But above all, may your will be done, not mine. So Jesus is showing uh, sorrow. He's showing weakness he's showing uh sadness he's showing fear because he is human just like any of us in that scenario so when the devil goes to the desert and starts showing jesus all these things and the food and the drink and the richness and he says hey i'll give you all of this i have power over this world i will give you all of this jesus and jesus says no because man don't live only by bread, but by the spirits, by every word that comes from God. So Jesus moves forward to his passion, right? To his passion. And he suffers death. And for example, the rosary that we pray today and every Friday of the year for that matter, the sorrowful rosary has five mysteries that we reflect on. We start by reflecting on the agony the agony that Jesus suffered in the garden, the Gethsemane, Gethsemane. I don't know how to say it, but in the Gethsem Gethsemane garden and the agony, the sorrow where he asks God to please remove from him that cup. But let's not leave the second part behind again. If it is your will, God, may your will be done, not mine. That's what Jesus is saying. We have the second uh, mystery of the rosary that we pray, right? And the second mystery is when uh, Jesus is abused and tortured. And the best way that I can, uh, for a second, just to have a 0% comprehension of it is to think of a baby or an innocent animal uh, or a child who is innocent, who haven't done anything wrong, right? Because Jesus came to this world to proclaim the gospel of God and to say, hey, I'm the son of God. Here are the miracles I'm performing. I have the power over this world. And nobody believed him. And that was his crime. That was his crime. So he was innocent. And for a second, I think of that, you know, and I can't even think too much because I'm so weak. I'm so weak. I can't even reflect on that torture too much. 
The third mystery is when Jesus receives the crown and the crown is full of uh, uh, thorns that penetrate his flesh, his forehead, his head, his skull. And uh, they mock him. They say, well, if you're the king, if you're the king of the Jews, if you're the son of God, come down from the cross. And they put vinegar on it to make it hurt even more. And they, they mock him, right? The fourth mystery that we pray today in the rosary, uh, by the intercession of the Virgin Mary, who is the mother of God, who is the teenager that was chosen between all women in all generations. God said, you know what? I'm going to choose this one. And she's not even going to die. I'm going to take her to heaven after. But she had to watch that. She had to watch her son be tortured, abused, crucified, and hurt. And I actually don't think it's a coincidence that I had a dream last night that my dog, who is my, I don't have children, so my dog is like my best friend, really, that he was uh, hit by a car. I mean, he was fine afterwards, but in the dream, I had that pain. And this reminds me of uh, Mary. I mean, it's the closest thing that I can get to it. It's the worst pain that I could have felt. And as of today, right, because I, I already lost so much in my life that the closest relationship I have today is with my best friend, my dog, and God. <laughs> And because they're unconditional, oh, sorry, they're unconditional love, right? They're unconditional love. So any relationship that I can have with any other human being could never approach what uh, I share with my dog and with God. So that dream where I experienced that pain of a mother, right? It just gives me a little bit, a 0% understanding of uh, Mary watching her son, suffer in the cross. The fourth mystery after the, the crown and the thorns, we contemplate, we reflect on Jesus carrying the cross where he had to do the, the walk, what we call the Via Sacra in Portuguese, uh, the sacred, I don't know how to say that in English, but it's where he goes and he walks with the cross and there's somebody there to help him and he falls and they help him get up and they offer him something and he says no and he falls and he gets up. And that journey that he had to do carrying that heavy cross, heavy cross. And what does Jesus say to us as his followers, as his children? He says, if you would like to follow me, take your cross upon you and follow me. So Jesus never said, if you follow me, you will be super rich. You will have no issues. Every disease will be huge. You never lose anybody. And you will be extremely happy in this world. He never said that. A lot of times we hear a lot of uh, preaching, especially from non-denominational churches that preach abundance and richness and only the the things prosperity they preach prosperity and jesus message was not surrounded around prosperity jesus messages was message was surrounded around his sacrifice his cross so when we deviate too much from the message and we go to the prosperity message we may be straying away from his main message, which was take upon your cross, take your cross upon you, carry your cross and follow me. So take the sufferings, accept the sufferings of this world with dignity and glorifying his name because every suffering is an offering to him. It's an offering. Jesus, I offer you my suffering today for the sins of this world, the fallen world where we live. Uh, the priest said something, and I, I would have to double check, but he said that as of 
March of 2024, just this year, 100 million babies already been aborted by their mothers. Innocent babies, people that were supposed to be born, to be priests, to be, to be good people, to be teachers, to be politicians that would influence this world in a good, positive way, that would be, that were chosen to be here. They were aborted, they were killed. And when a baby is aborted, the baby feels the pain. The baby is taken apart. His body is taken apart and he feels it. So for those horrendous sins, we offer the sufferings of this world, right? But this doesn't take anything away from Jesus actually being the ultimate price because through him our sins were forgiven but he's the one saying take your cross and follow me so the fifth mystery is where we actually reflect on the crucifixion and the death of Jesus right and that is the I would say the second biggest center of the Catholic faith because the first is the resurrection. If it wasn't for the resurrection, if Jesus hadn't won the death, right? So what, what are we taught? We're taught that Jesus is sacrificed on Friday and his soul goes down into hell, sees and meets Satan who has the keys to the souls of humanity because of sin. Because Satan infiltrated the sin into us as humans. He holds a key at that point. And through today's sacrifice, through Good Friday sacrifice, Jesus takes that key from Satan and says, From now on, whoever believes in me, my sacrifice, my body, my blood, will be saved and you have no power over them anymore. Whoever believes in me repents and follows me. You will have no power. So he takes that key from Satan and he goes to heaven to sit right next to God, the Father. In the mystery of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and the Trinity. God, Father, Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, God, Father, Jesus, Son, and Holy Spirit the giver of life. So he sits right next to God, the Father. And on the third day, he comes back to his body. He's resurrected. And then he sees his uh, apostles. And he will pray something, which is my favorite prayer from the Bible is when Jesus is going to... Okay, before I go to this prayer, let me just uh, read or... Uh, this is the Psalm 31 that we would typically uh, read in the church today. Father, in your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O oh Lord, O oh faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach. A laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unmembered dread. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, oh no, this one I already, I already read, <laughs> sorry. But my trust is in you, O oh Lord. 
I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me. From the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me from your kindness. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, in your hand, I commend my spirit. Amen. So this is uh, what Jesus did uh, pray in the in the cross, right? As he is dying. Also in Hebrews 9, 11, 12, we have in the New Testament saying, but when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have now come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. He entered once for all into the holy place, taking not the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. So now real quick, I'm going to try to find the prayer that I love, which is when Jesus was about to, Jesus' prayer to God. Uh, okay, this is my absolute favorite, is when Jesus prayed to God for us, okay? So, Jesus says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them whom you have given me, for they are mine. And all mine they are. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are the world. And I came to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those who thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. So Jesus is saying to God that you have given them to me and just like they're mine, they're yours. And may you make us, me and them, one. How is that done? That is done through the Eucharist, through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that was given, given for us. Every day in Mass, everywhere in the world where Mass is celebrated, when the priests, when the priest, by the power that was given to him, when Jesus said to Peter, you are the rock of my church. And whatever you connect in this earth, I will connect in heaven. So Peter, given that first authority, the priesthood for the church, passed on in a mystery of faith from generation to generation. When the father, the priest today, no matter who he is, because the mystery of his, his authority is in the sacrament of the order, which is a sacrament, a visible sign of those things we cannot see so it's something that is connected in heaven and on earth. The same way it's connected on earth, it's connected in heaven. When the priest lifts that simple bread, that is a simple bread, nothing more than that, right before he consecrates that bread. Once the priest consecrates that bread, that bread is turned into Jesus Christ himself. The body and the blood that was given for us today in this Good Friday, Jesus becomes real in the sacrament of the Eucharist. So when people say, why don't you go to this church or that church? And I say, well, they don't have the Eucharist. There are a lot of things that I would like that 
my Catholic church would offer. I would like it to have more youthful activities, more modern music. I would like it to have more uh, charismatic uh, sermons. But none of that changes the fact that Jesus in the Eucharist can only be found in the Catholic Church. So that's what he's saying here. He's saying that they may be one with me as we are, as Jesus and God are one. Jesus is asking God the Father that we may be one just like they are. What an honor, what a gift. He says, while I was with them in this world, I kept them in your name. Those that you have given me, I have kept and none was lost. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fill themselves. I have given them my word. I have given them your word. And the world hated them. Why? Because they're not of the world as I am not of the world. And this is another part that I would love to stop for a second. I don't know. If you believe in Jesus today, I don't know if you ever had an experience with him. I can testify that I have had an experience with him, Jesus Christ, personally, in my soul. And nothing can change that. No debate, no rationalization, nothing that you can tell me or prove in this world can change what I have felt in my soul. And because of that, there are people that don't like me. There are people that have, um, let me just say, there are people that are not genuine towards me. There are people that I can feel an energy of a blockage or some type of this day. It's the hate that comes from the world because the world is where we are today, but it's not where we belong to. It's not what we are, where we were made to live. So Jesus is saying, I'm not of this world and they're not of this world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from evil. They are not of the world. Sanctify them through my truth. My word is the truth. So through the Bible, through reading the Bible, through reading scriptures, through studying scripture, that's what Jesus is saying. God, please sanctify them. But how? Sanctify them through my word. So if we want to be sanctified by the power of God, we have to obey Jesus here and study and read and be practitioners of his word. Then he says, as you have sent me into this world, even so I have also sent them into this world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they may also be sanctified through the truth. So when people say we're not saints, we can't be saints, that's contradicting the Bible, right? Because he just is saying, so they may be sanctified as well. Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. That they also may be one with us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory which you have given me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me. That they may be being perfect in one. 
and that the world may know that you have sent me and that you have loved them as you have loved me. So Jesus, who has opened the doors of salvation and unconditional love of the Father to all of those who believe in him, proclaim that Jesus is the Lord, repent and follow him, take our crosses and follow him, right? Jesus is giving us the biggest and best prayer. He's speaking directly with his father that we shall be given that love and that we shall become one with him. What a gift. The Bible talks about the day of the judgment, the judgment day, the day that we are all going to be judged by our, our sins, by our uh actions, our charitable actions, our good deeds and our bad deeds, right? But there is also the mystery of the church through many things where it says that Jesus will come between, not between, in front of the Father next to us and he'll say, I vouch for this one. Yes, Dad, this is my girl. This is my guy. This is my friend. I vouch for them. And that God through his mercy will not look at us and judge us by our sins, but he will judge us through the mercy that comes from Jesus Christ loving us and from Jesus Christ vouching for us that we have followed him in this earth, in this fallen world. One of the things that were, were so strong for me this last evening when I was praying with the priest uh, is when he prayed for two things specifically that were very powerful. I mean, there were thing, three things that were very powerful. One was the innocent children being killed in the wombs of their mothers. Two was the sins of this world this world is fallen. This world is completely fallen. The ideologies, the way that they have been replacing the identity of the human being, the dignity that the human being is born with, that they have been confusing children and teenagers and young women and men. They have been confusing them with ideologies, telling them that they can be anything they want, that they shouldn't have this or that, that they shouldn't have faith, that they shouldn't be family people, that they should be independent, that they should glorify themselves, their bodies, that they should live by vanity and the pleasures of the instincts that come the fallen world that is moving, moved by greed, that through the greed engage in wars that kills millions of innocent people, children, women, and men who suffer, who don't have a place to live and to sleep and, to, and nothing to eat today because they are in, in a war zone. For those sins... We come in this Good Friday, this powerful day of the church all over the world, united, reflecting the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Lord. We pray for the sins of the world. How great is our God? How great is his power? How great is the Lord? We don't know. We really don't have any way to know. All we have is faith. So through that faith, we may pray for the sinful world. And the other thing that was very powerful in the priest prayer was to pray for all the priests. And to call the priests to repent for their sins. As they were called to be light of the church, and they are the most attacked 
They're the most attacked children of God. I've learned that when a priest is ordained, the powers of hell unleash a certain number of demons to target that priest. And that is more than any other human would have. And they, they target them through all kinds of ways because they have been given that sacrament power, the power where they connect on earth and it's connected in heaven, just like Peter was given that power. Through this rock, you are Peter, and through this rock, I will give you, I will give you the power to connect whatever you connect in heaven and on earth will be connected in heaven. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Those are Jesus' words. So when a priest sins, when a priest falls, when a priest commits any horrendous act, and that is what Satan uses to weaken the church that Jesus has built, the Catholic church, the universal church, the one that began it all with the apostles. So that was the other powerful petition today, because today is such a, an immense, there is no words, but it's such a huge day in the faith. There's so much power today. I'm only human, so there's not much I can say, but there's a whole spiritual war happening all around us. There's a battle in our minds, in our souls, and there's a battle all around us through the powers of hell and heaven. And we know the promise of God is that Jesus is already the victorious one. But there are so many things that have to happen so the history and the promises and the prophecies can be fulfilled. That's just the way it is. Why? I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I have faith. And I have gratitude today because Jesus has given himself. He has accepted the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, so that I, the small sinner that I am, the drop of water in the ocean, smallest than, smaller than a grain of sand, the one that came from dust and to the dust I will return so that I may have hope that even though I have made terrible mistakes in my life, that I continue to sin every day, every day. The sin that wakes up inside of me and that makes me think things I don't want to think and do things I don't want to do, just like St. Paul said in the Bible. But also, the sacrifice that has given me hope that I can invite Jesus to live inside my heart today and that he may heal me and sanctify me through his word. It's such a powerful day. So I'm glad that I was able to share a little bit about Good Friday today so that we may all be connected to the Holy Spirit, and like Jesus prayed to God, just like he and God are one, so that we may be one in God. Have a blessed day. God bless you.